Greater Faith. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's telling them that being a servant of the Most High God, and he hooked up with the family. He's like the brother of James. Mm -hmm. Huh? And to those that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. I'm hooked up with them. I'm hooked up with the righteous. I'm hooked up with the holy. I'm hooked up with those that are in the family of God. So you know where I'm coming from. Amen? Amen. And his purpose was to let them know that there's going to be some false teachers come along. Paul even said there's going to be some grievous wolves. There's, there's going to be those after Paul said after, Paul said after he leave. They're going to come in some folks that want to scatter the flock. For them to run after them. So we have that today. That there's folks trying to scatter the flock. Those that would come in and try to take over with lies. He said, Paul said, look, we didn't come with no with, 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 with any any kind of flair. We didn't come with great swelling words. We didn't come in with, 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 with trying to uh, 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 and to tell you things that weren't true, that would just catch your ears. But it did say in the last day would be some itchy ears. Well. And it did say those would be leaving the truth of the gospel to follow after things that are not true. Right. You must be careful to know the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Jew was saying, I, I, I'm, I'm hooked up with those that know the truth. Huh? He says, the servant of Jesus Christ. And brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm in there where I need to be. To tell you what I need to tell you. So, don't worry about uh, who I am. Because I've told, I'm telling you. I, I've got the line on Huh? I have my credentials. Huh? There's some folks come up with some, some long credentials that we don't mean nothing. Huh? But if you have the right credentials in Christ, you've been called, been sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's your credentials. And it says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. He's writing a letter. Let him know these things. He said, Beloved, when I give all those to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto you and to the saints. He's saying, it was needful for me to write to you. I had to write unto you because there's going to be some things coming down the line. And I need you to be equipped. I need you to be steadfast, hold fast, and, and be bold in the faith that you have. Stand in the faith that you have, that you've known. <coughs> He's saying, contend for the faith. I mean, you got to fight. There, 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 there's a boxer, he's a contender. He's coming up. And he's a contender. He's got a battle. And he's got a battle to win. He said, we must fight the battle of faith. Huh? There's going to be some false teachers come along. But you got to be steadfast. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Huh? You, first of all, you have to fight with the faith that's in, 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 that's in you. Right. Because sometimes your faith gets a little weak. Amen. So you have to be steadfast. First of all, the faith that's in you. Mm -hmm. 
So for you to hold on to cling to, then after that, strip the strip of somebody else. Let somebody else know that what is being taught, this is Jesus, the taught about Jesus. That he is God. It was a virgin birth. That he did come and die to save the souls of mankind. There is no other. And then God does have a wrath. He does love us. So for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. If we had to buy our eternal life, we couldn't buy it. The price was too high. Yes, the, we couldn't pay. We couldn't pay our way out of eternal death. Well, no way. I, I, we were sinners, ungodly, and God would not accept that kind of death. He would, we could have been accepted. It, it had to be some blood spilled in order that our sins be washed away. But nobody else could do it. There was, there was no human could do it. Although there were some, some righteous and holy men that came along. But that blood was still tainted from Adam. It had to be someone's blood that was not tainted by man. It had to be a God. It had to be Jesus' blood that was spilled. That paid the price. It had to be someone without sin. Huh? Someone without sin to take the place of sinners. And it had to be Jesus. Born of a virgin, the Son of God. That's who it had to be. It couldn't be no other. Can't be Buddha, Muhammad, anybody else. They can tell you what they want to tell you. I'm not trying to make fun of nobody. But it had to be Jesus. There's so many things that that's on this earth that's going through, to and fro, that distracts, they're all distractions from the truth. That's all, they're all distractions from the truth. And it, it keeps man from, when, when you don't have a truth, it keeps you from being saved. You can't get, there's no, there's no salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus. Right. Amen. He's the one who hung, bled, and died. He's the one who gave his life and said, no man take my life, but I give my life. Yes, sir. Right. And he gave it freely. Right. He says, no man can take my life, yes, sir. but I give it freely. Yes. Yes. Well, you're just saying here, look, what I told you is, is need for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Which was once delivered unto the saints. It was delivered to you. You must hold it up. Continue in it. Don't drop the ball. Lots of times I think churches have dropped the ball about the faith. The faith that is in God. You said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. My faith has to be in Christ Jesus. And when your faith is in him, it's in God also. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And in the 14th verse says, and the word became flesh to dwell among men. Jesus, the word of God, showing us the way, trailblazing the way, showing us, and then when we go through that, he's already made a way through that. Because he died first, he's, he's the firstborn from, from the dead. To live. So that way we know through Christ he died. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But after three days, it said he got up with all power and authority in his hand. And all power and authority in his hand. So he got up, he said, You get up too. Huh? What I went through, you go up through. Didn't he tell the disciples, can you drink from the same cup I drank from? You're going to be persecuted? You're going to be persecuted because of righteousness sake? But it's not because of you, because of Jesus. So it says, happy are those when you, are, when you go through these things. He said, you ought to be happy. 
Not be sad. He said, you ought to be happy. Remember, they beat the disciples. And told them, don't preach in that name no more. They beat them, and what they do? They were skipping and hopping, yeah. jumping and praising, and we were worthy to be beat. Because of Christ. We're worthy to be. Count yourself worthy. When you go through something. For righteousness sake. He said, don't, don't. He said, if you're going to go through these things for righteousness sake, happy are ye. But if you go through because you're doing wrong, uh-uh. That's not, that's not, that's not a part of me. Verse 4 says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before the, of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men. Turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Certain men have crept in unaware. Church, you have to be aware of who's around you. You have to be aware of who's saying what and how and what it pertains to. So certain men have crept in unaware. Did he tell, did he tell us don't be asleep, but be sober, be, be, be diligent, Watching around you, watching what's going on around you. Because you have certain people that will creep in with a different idea. It, it might not be very much. It might be just something little. But Jesus said, a little leaven leavened the whole lump. So I have to be aware of what's going around in your congregation. When somebody comes in a little idea, huh? The little idea can turn into other ones and other ones. Yeah, pretty soon something's going on that shouldn't be going on in the church. He said that, I don't, uh, huh? Certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Been, they were old and ordained to this. They, 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 it was a time they're going to come in. Because Satan don't give up. He doesn't give up. And he has his he has his his ministers too. The Bible talks about Satan got his his ministers too. Huh? He make it sound real good. Huh? We, we see those things. See, the spirit of God that dwells in you should know. The spirit of God is in someone else. The spirit of God in you should know the spirit of someone else that does not have the spirit of God. It discerns. It, it, it's the spirit of God that discerns. Amen? So that from old and they have crept in to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. Good morning, welcome to Greater Faith. My name is Jimmy Stallworth. We have some wonderful announcements for you today. Let's take a look. Announcements are as follows. Sunday service, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Bible study in Sunday school. 10.30 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. church service. Wednesday service, Bible study, prayer meeting, and choir rehearsal. 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Bible study and prayer meeting. 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. choir practice. Come let us celebrate our Lord with praise and worship. Youth and kids. The children and youth will practice with Sister Linda Taylor at 10.30 a.m. every first and third Saturday of the month. Special prayer requests for the prayer list. Please call the church at 925-427-2161. Prayer requests for the sick and shut-in, also please call the church at 925-427-2161. Please take notice of the following. Every first Saturday of the month, please join Pastor and Sister Hunt at Diamond Ridge Healthcare Center at 1.30 p.m. Every second and fourth Saturday of the month, 
The food pantry meets and shares food with those in need. Every second Saturday of the month, the women's meeting at 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. And every second Tuesday of the month, a board meeting at 1 p.m. Those were your announcements. Now back to the sermon. Welcome today. I call the name. Have changed and have done this. That everybody gets to go to heaven. Inclusion. Everybody gets to go. No matter, no matter what you've done. That there is a God that he don't have a wrath, but there's no hell. Huh? There, 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 there's no hell. And everybody gets to go to heaven. So, why do you need preaching then? The preaching of the gospel. That Jesus Christ died on the cross. You ain't talking about the blood. The blood that saved people. But you have to repent. Huh? John the Baptist preached repentance and baptized. Huh? Those that repented. And then Jesus came along after John and preached the same thing. Repent. You must repent and believe. Huh? So how is it you don't believe in God? You have not repented, but you still get to go anyway. So what am I doing here? What are we doing here then? If you get to go to heaven anyway, what's the reason to serve God? Yes, the blood was shed on the cross. For everybody. But the word says everybody that believed. And then to say that, the, that, that this word of God is no more good. Heard him say it. Need another candy. No, you have everything that God has given us right here. When you believe it, This is creeping in a lot of places. And people is believing it. It is not the truth. Coming in unawares and people believing that I can go to heaven just like you can go. So why should I go to church? Wait a minute. God said you must repent and believe on his son. Because the son did the work. Now, when you look at this, look at the cross. When I have Jesus and the two thieves on the cross, they said, Jesus, get us down from here. Get yourself down and get us down to save yourself. And then save us too. If thou be the Christ, save us. Crying it out, save us. Get yourself down. Uh, well, we know you can't. The woman on the right says, wait a minute. There's something wrong here. I deserve, we deserve what we get. Yeah. We're some bad men. We did wrong things. And they caught us. And they crucified us. It must have been some bad because they, they were being crucified on the cross. Mm -hmm. And says, he says, we deserve what we get, but this man, he stressed out. Yeah. He's going through some pain, but still he recognizes, I deserve what I get. Stretch out in pain, just like Jesus. They all stretch out in pain. Yeah. But he says, this man does not deserve the same thing I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. I deserve it. He was repenting on the cross and saying, I deserve the death that I get. Mm -hmm. Because of what I did in my life. Mm -hmm. The other thief didn't say nothing. The other one didn't, didn't say nothing after that. I guess he didn't say he didn't recognize, well, maybe you're right. He didn't, even, he didn't even agree with him. He's still moaning and groaning and wanting Jesus to get him down because he didn't want to die to death. He didn't want no more pain. Just get me down. Well. But the other one on the right hand said, look, I know he knew in his heart. He, didn't, he wasn't just mouthing it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we can mouth some stuff yeah. and make it just sound good. Yeah. But he had to believe in his heart that Jesus did not deserve to be up on the cross with them. He had to believe, he said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. On the cross, yeah. this man believed in his heart and confessed with his mouth on the cross yeah. that this Jesus don't belong here yeah. beside me. Yeah. Yeah. I deserve.
deserve what I get. They says, Jesus, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. He was asking Jesus, I know I'm going to die up here. I know I'm dying. Well, just remember me. Just give me a little place. Just, just give me some peace wherever you go. Remember me when you come into your kingdom that I might be with you. Remember me. If you remember me, maybe give me a little place to be. So you said, today. Today. When you and I leave this whole earth, today. When you give your last breath, today. When I breathe my last breath, I, I believe you for you, but I'll, you'll catch up with me. Because I'm going to give up the ghost. But I'll see you on the other side. This day, you'll be with me in paradise. Now the other one didn't repent. He didn't repent. He died. So what's the difference? Did he go into the paradise like the one on the right? How can he get in when he never repented? He, 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 he didn't agree with the one on the right. So that you, you see it on the cross of dying and going to hell and dying and going to heaven. Right there on the cross. The blood was being shed. The death that Christ died to pay for the sins. And the blood that was shed to wash off from all sin and unrighteousness. Right there on the cross. All was right there on the cross. Everything was done on the cross right there. Still showing man the power of God. Amen. The one on the right met Jesus. Amen. As soon as Jesus said, he gave up the ghost. He met Jesus. The other one, he went to hell. There is a hell. But see, that's, that's a place you go to. But see, the Bible says, Revelation says, that death and hell would be burned up in the lake of fire. Yeah. That's right. Which was burned forever. Yeah. That's, that's the final place. Where a soul be tormented. Because you didn't believe in God. Yeah. You didn't believe in the gift that God gave you, eternal life through his son. You didn't even believe. You didn't even think about it. You, you are like the thief that's on the right hand, on the left hand side. You didn't even give heed to God. Even on the cross, dying and, and everything else, you still didn't give heed to the gift that was right there beside you. The gift was right there. Eternal life was right there beside him. But he didn't even acknowledge it. It's the same way with a lot of people in the world. They don't acknowledge the gift of God. They don't acknowledge how good God is. By giving his son to us. That's what Jesus is saying. Look, you have to, you have to contend for the faith. You have to fight. Because there are going to be some folks that come in that's going to try to tear down people's faith. Uh -huh. And give them lies that you can go in to God's heaven and do without doing anything. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. If you didn't want God here on earth and didn't even want to know him, didn't know him, didn't care, mm. why would you go somewhere that you didn't want to go in the first place? Why, why would you go somewhere you, you didn't even think about God? Why would you go somewhere that you didn't even, didn't even, didn't even like? Wait a minute. God going to bring you into heaven. You don't even like it. God going to bring you to heaven. You don't even care to be there. You didn't want to be there. They didn't believe about it, but he's going to take you anyway. He's going to force you somewhere you don't want to go to. He gave us free will, didn't he? So how are you going to force you into heaven? How are you going to make you go when you don't even want to go? Matter of fact, you don't even believe in him. So once a man dies, that, that judgment comes after that. After that's a judgment. So it's set. Your faith is set. You better get him while you live. You better get a good understanding and, and keep what you have in the faith and believing in Jesus Christ. Keep the faith. Don't let somebody talk you into another way. Know the truth. If somebody comes
mean something else? Well, let me look at the word. Well, no, it doesn't really say it in the word, but it says this, it says that. And then give me give some philosophical philosophy. No, if it ain't written in the word, it ain't true. If it's not written there and it doesn't line up with the word, yeah, that's right. it ain't true. Amen. Right. Huh? But then if it doesn't line up with the truth, it's not, you can't tell me something that doesn't line up with what God's word. And then you have to know the word for yourself. Amen. Know the truth. Because some folks will twist it, make it sound real good. Amen. You know, the devil tried to do that with Jesus. Yeah. Huh? Who was jumping into the mountain after he was baptized? Satan comes with the word, he knows the word, but he twists the word. Yeah. Huh? So when you know the truth, he can't twist it on you. Amen. Huh? Somebody can give you a scripture, but they'll put a little twist to it. Huh? Now, wait a minute. Your spirit and the word, Jesus said, my word is spirit and it is truth. Amen. There's spirit in the word. Because it's, it's God's word. So there's spirit in it. And so when, when you hear the word of God, that same spirit that's in you that helped wrote the word Amen. should let you know whether it's true or not. Amen. Huh? Of a study yourself. Amen. Read the word. Know the word. So when someone says something, it has to line up with the word. Yeah. It can't have a little twist to it or anything else. Because what happens? Whenever you say the word of God, and then you twist it. It's no more the truth. Yeah. Huh? That's when the prophets, whenever God sent them out to say something, they said the word of God says this. They said exactly what God said. They didn't change not one word. They didn't change because it, it was God giving the word through them. And they had to say exactly what God said. They couldn't say anything different other than what God said. They said exactly what he said. So much we believe and be doers of God's word. So in past times, in such a time, it says God spoke through the prophet. Now he speaks through his son, Jesus Christ. Everything is through Christ now. Everything is wrapped around Christ now. The gospel of the Lord said the, the, the true meaning of life in Christ. And it's, this verse says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. This says, and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved their lasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that day. So you say God loves everybody so much that he would not condemn anyone. But he loves us so much he's going to take you into heaven. He says, no, that's not true. He says, even those he took out of Egypt and didn't believe he destroyed them. Even the angels that was right there in heaven, they're in darkness right now in chains. If he did that, God does punish those that are wicked. Remember when Moses went up to the mountain. We don't know what, Jesus, what, what Moses went to. He'd been there 40 days in front of him. We don't know what happened to him. But we want a, we want a, we want a God. Aaron made us a golden calf. Kept bothering me. Finally he did. Moses comes back down. With the tablets broken because he was mad at the people because God was giving him the Ten Commandments and they down there partying. Having a good time. Dance around a golden calf that they had made said, this is our God. After God had delivered them from Egypt. All of them will be on God's side, come over here. All the ones who rebelled against God, he opened up the earth. Thousands of them. And close it back up like it never been open. Mm -hmm. Now tell me God does not punish the wicked. Amen. The unbelieving. Amen. But God loves us. Amen. All he asks you to do is believe. Amen. And believe the truth Amen. of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. That he sent his son in the world Amen. to save the world. 
He said, not his son to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Amen. We're not condemned. So those that have Christ are not condemned, but those who do not have Christ are condemned already. Amen. But you can become uncondemned by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. And living the life that God has given us freely. Because everything was paid on the cross. Amen. Jesus paid it all. He finished everything on the cross. He gave his life on the cross. That you and I can live a greater life. We can celebrate down here. And show up celebrate when we get to heaven. But Jesus said, I go back to prepare a place for you where I am. There you may be also. He's waiting for you. He's coming back to get the church without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming back to get you. So that my sheep hear my voice and not another. When the world is called, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When you live the life that God has said in His Word, you have eternal life. You already have it when you believe. It's not nothing you can get. He gave it to you. When you believe the truth and you live according to His Word, you have secured eternal life. Nobody can take it away from you. But you have a security to eternal life when you believe and live according to his word. We thank God for everything he's done for us. Amen. He's doing for us. You'll have, some, you'll have some, 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 some turbulence down here a little bit. But stay holding fast. That's why he said contend for the faith. Let other folks know what Christ has done for you and for the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Greater faith.